as has been the case with many technological advancements of modern science, the theory behind warp drive technology has its origins in science fiction. In Frank Herbert's Dune, it is possible to travel vast distances by folding space, that is, by folding the fabric of space-time, thereby bringing two distant points in space together so that a craft can travel between them without moving. Soon they'll begin to fold space. Far off in the control rooms of spice gas, traveling without moving. Star Trek's antimatter-powered warp drive allows a spacecraft to travel effectively faster than the speed of light by generating a warp field around the ship, a local distortion of the space-time continuum that does not violate the laws of relativity. Warp drive, Mr. Scott. These theories of warp travel are not so distant from the scientific theories of warp travel being explored today. Dr. Harold White, the Advanced Propulsion Team Lead for the NASA Engineering Directorate, is leading a research and development effort in warp drive technology with his team at EagleWorks Laboratories out of the Johnson Space Center. Now, space warp works on the principle uh, of expanding and contracting space in such a way that allows you to go somewhere uh, very, very quickly. Now, we know inflation is a very real phenomenon because uh, when we look out uh, at the stars in the cosmos uh, from stars that are very far away from us, uh, that starlight has been redshifted uh, because those stars, the space between us and those stars has been stretching since the Big Bang 13.7 billion years ago. So the, the idea of inflation is just built into the, the cosmos around us and we see evidence for, for it everywhere. Uh, and so there's no speed limit uh, on the expansion and contraction of space. You can expand and contract space at any speed you want. So you can actually <clears throat> find a way to get around what I call the 11th commandment, thou shalt not exceed the speed of light. His theoretical warp drive is based on the groundbreaking thought experiment posed by physicist Miguel Alcubierre in 1994. Alcubierre proposed that within the framework of general relativity and without the introduction of wormholes, it is possible to modify space-time in a way that allows a spaceship to travel with an arbitrarily large speed. By a purely local expansion of space-time behind the spaceship and an opposite contraction in front of it, motion faster than the speed of light as seen by observers outside the disturbed region is possible. The resulting distortion is reminiscent of the warp drive of science fiction. However, just as happens with wormholes, exotic matter will be needed in order to generate a distortion of space-time. Warp drive technology is important for space exploration because, as Dr. White explains, it would take Voyager 1, one of the highest energy craft we have launched to date, 75,000 years to reach our nearest star system, Alpha Centauri, at 4.3 light years away. And that is without any of the apparatus necessary to sustain a crew. White cites Project Daedalus a 1970s proposal for a theoretical spacecraft developed by the British Interplanetary Society with the aim of figuring out what it would take to get a robotic probe to Barnard's star, six light years away, within 50 years. The resulting craft would weigh 54,000 metric tons, with 92% of that mass being fuel. Instead of traditional propulsion methods, therefore, warp drive technology may be our best hope for practicable interstellar travel. Scientists at EagleWorks Laboratories are testing mathematical equations using an instrument called the White-Judy Warp Field Interferometer. They have created, in their words, an interferometer testbed that will try to generate and detect a microscopic instance of a warp bubble. They are attempting to simulate the warp drive on a microscopic scale using a ring of ceramic capacitors charged to tens of thousands of volts that generate a ring of large potential energy observed as blue shifted to the lab frame. Eventually, they hope to use devices to directly generate negative vacuum energy. The successful creation of a tiny warp bubble in space-time should be observable in the waves of the interferometer's lasers shifting slightly out of phase. Results of their experiments so far have been inconclusive, since non-negative readings have been observed, but the differences they are seeking to detect 
are so minute to begin with that a wide variety of potential sources of error have yet to be ruled out. Dr. White writes that the detection of even the smallest instance of the phenomenon would be a Chicago Pile moment, comparing it to the first demonstration of a controlled nuclear reaction in December 1942, which generated a mere half watt. It was followed in November of 1943 by the activation of a 4 megawatt reactor. White reminds his readers that proof of the practical application of a scientific idea can be a tipping point for technology development. This is the IXS Enterprise, a concept for a warp-capable spacecraft designed by Dr. White and artist Mark Raidmaker. The two rings around the ship would generate a warp bubble within which the ship would travel. According to Eagleworks' calculations, spacecraft utilizing warp field mechanics would be able to travel to Alpha Centauri in two weeks as measured by clocks on Earth. Vitally, clocks aboard the spacecraft would maintain the same time as Earthbound clocks. Time aboard the spacecraft would run at the same rate relative to time on Earth, avoiding problems of time dilation associated with Einstein's theory of relativity. In theory, the craft would only be able to avoid these problems because it would not approach the speed of light. There are no tidal forces within a warp bubble, and the craft's acceleration within it would be zero. The space in front of the craft would be contracting and the space behind it expanding, but the craft itself would not move. Therefore, the craft would not be traveling faster than light, yet it would arrive at a nearby star long before the light originating from our sun at the same time of its departure. At the Space Vision Conference in 2013, Dr. White explained the basic mechanics of such a craft. So what you see here is uh, you see this uh, little football shape there. That would be uh, uh, where you might have your robotic instruments. Uh, if you wanted to be bold, that's where you'd probably put your crew. Uh, but what the math requires is it requires the presence of this ring of negative energy density or, or negative pressure around the spacecraft. And so the presence of this ring around the spacecraft causes uh, space-time to behave in such a way so that it expands behind the spacecraft and contracts in front of the spacecraft, and this is what allows you to go somewhere very quickly. The energy required to generate a useful warp bubble is one of the greatest concerns with the technology. In Dr. White's words, space-time is really stiff, so to create the expansion and contraction effect in a useful manner in order for us to reach interstellar destinations in reasonable time periods would require a lot of energy. It was previously thought that the exotic matter required would equate to the mass of Jupiter, rendering the theory inapplicable. But Dr. White's sensitivity analysis suggests that the energy requirements could be greatly reduced by optimizing the warp bubble thickness and oscillating the bubble intensity to reduce the stiffness of space-time. Thicker warp bubbles, according to White's models, seem to require lower energy density to maintain. Theoretically, an optimized warp bubble would reduce the required amount of exotic matter to a mass smaller than Voyager 1, about 500 kilograms, for a 10-meter bubble with an effective velocity of 10 times the speed of light. Dr. White is operating on the fringe of the scientific community, however. For the most part, his work has been met with great skepticism from other scientists. Sean Carroll, a theoretical cosmologist specializing in dark energy and general relativity, is one such skeptic. Of White's warp drive, he writes, In short, it requires negative energy densities, which can't be strictly disproven but are probably unrealistic, and the gravitational fields produced would likely rip any ship to shreds. My personal estimate of the likelihood we will ever be able to build a warp drive is much less than 1% and the chances it will happen in the next hundred years I would put at less than 0.01%. Carroll also doesn't believe using exotic matter as a power source is feasible, since the mass energy equivalent of 700 kilograms, which I don't believe for a second, I suspect you need much more, essentially means you need 350 kilograms of antimatter to combine with 350 kilograms of matter. The current cost of producing one gram of antimatter is about $100 trillion, but with completely unsupported optimistic estimates, 
you might get that down to $10 billion per gram. So, with the most wild-eyed pie-in-the-sky estimates, fuel alone will cost you $3.5 quadrillion, roughly the entire economic output of the world for 40 years. Economic constraints aside, others following Dr. White's work have cautioned against the dangers of using antimatter. Ed Oswald, writing for Extreme Tech, warns that just a third of a gram of the stuff interacting with matter in the wrong way could release energy equivalent to the Hiroshima blast. That means White's Alcubier warp drive still requires the amount of energy equivalent to 1.5 million Hiroshimas, enough to wipe civilization off the Earth. Still others have criticized EagleWorks methods, since Dr. White and his team have yet to submit their results for peer review, are working with a pocket change budget relative to other comparable research programs. And while Dr. White works for NASA and runs EagleWorks out of NASA's Johnson Space Center, NASA does not officially support or sanction their work. NASA has this to say about warp drive technology. Warp drive, or any other term for faster-than-light travel, still remains at the level of speculation. There are certainly some credible concepts in scientific literature, however, it's too soon to know if they are viable. Science fiction writers have given us many images of interstellar travel, but traveling at the speed of light is simply imaginary at present. While NASA is not pursuing interstellar flight, there are many absurd theories that have become reality over the years of scientific research. But for the near future, warp drive remains a dream. Dr. White concludes his article by postulating that perhaps a Star Trek experience within our lifetime is not such a remote possibility. I am no scientist myself, but it seems to me that the exotic matter problem could possibly be resolved as we gain a better understanding of dark energy and its effects on the expansion of the universe. If it were possible to harness dark energy and control its expansion effect, and perhaps even induce it to contract space, then the potential applications to warp drive technology could bring the theory decisively out of the realm of science fiction and into reality. For now, though, we still have a long way to go before science fiction becomes science. But that should never stop us from boldly going where no one has gone before.